Hi, this is Rabbi Dr. Juan Marcos Barjona Gutierrez again, and I just wanted to make a brief video. I've got my kids in the background, so if they're making noise, I do apologize. But I wanted to talk about the, the title that I just released, uh, Jewish Conquistadors in the New World. Um, I've been very happy with the response. Most people have been uh, very excited about that title. It is based upon a, um, I think here comes my son right now, oh, right there, you can say hello. Um, it's based upon a, a presentation that I gave at the uh, Ogar Hispanic Geneal Genealogical Conference uh, last year. And um, the reaction has been positive for the most part. There have been a very uh, positive responses on Amazon. It shot up to the top 10 in the history of Jewish religion. But there have also been some negative uh, responses to it, and part of it uh, is related to two issues. The first is the claim that, that any of the conquistadors were Jewish, and then the second thing is the very association of Jews with the conquest of Mexico. Um, and I think I, we need to sort of look at those two topics independently. The second one, I think, is sort of a emotional response, the idea of not wanting uh, to associate Jews with what is considered by most people to have been a very, uh, you know, ter terrible uh, uh, war and conquest. The, the first issue is, is really what I'm much more concerned about. Um, individuals that came to the New World uh, from converso backgrounds um, are clearly... Uh, demonstrated within history. There's no question about that. We know that they were there. Um, and many of them were arrested for Judaizing practices by uh, the Inquisitions that were headed by bishops, and then later by the, the Holy Office of the Inquisition, much later in the uh, 16th century. Now, the idea that the uh, conversos, that the Anusim were not Jews, is, is flawed. It's a very mistaken uh, view. Um, one of the things that I did last week was release a, a complete video uh, analyzing a, a teshuva of uh, the Ribash. Uh, the Ribash was Rabbi Isaac Bar Sheshet Perfei. Um, and in this uh, uh, video, we looked at a particular case in which uh, a woman had, uh, had a divorce document. She was a forced convert. She had divorced her husband, who was a forced convert. The witnesses to the get were also forced convert. And uh, the question is, is the get, is the divorce document legitimate? And the Ribash goes into the detail of the, the basic review, review, and that is that a forced convert's eligibility uh, to serve as a witness is not automatically uh, invalid. So the first thing there we derive is that uh, a forced convert is, is a Jew. You can't even discuss the issue of their testimony being valid if they are not Jewish to begin with. So that premise is incorrect from the start. Um, the Rebash does talk about different types of Anusim. Some Anusim had become turncoats. Some people were directed, you know, their hearts were directed toward heaven. And he talks about the different elements of that. But some of the basic ideas that he communicates uh, are very important. And in subsequent weeks, I plan to release other videos analyzing different uh, Teshuvot, uh, uh, Halachic Responsa, that will uh, review the different attitudes of how the rabbis perceived Anusim or conversos in relation to different aspects of Jewish law. And even in those cases where they might seem to be uh, negative, if you will, towards Anusim, it only relates to that specific aspect of their eligibility to serve as witnesses or, or a party to a particular um, uh, event or a particular uh, uh, process in, in Jewish law. It does not, uh, as Doratzom, Doratzom does, uh, you know, as a scholar, uh, notes that it does not speak on the notion of Jewish identity, and I think that's the problem that people uh, make. They might read a work like uh, Ben Sion de uh, The History of the Moranos of Spain, uh, or the Moranos of Spain, and, and conclude, based off of a couple of different responses, that um, they, uh, the Anusim were considered to be non-Jews, and that's simply not true. Um, it all depends on the question of from what perspective is the uh, a community asking, and in what perspective is a rabbi responding to? And it doesn't mean that a person can't lose their eligibility to serve as a witness um, in certain cases, but as, as a whole, especially within this time frame, we're looking at the basic issue of individuals who converted and their children. Um, and in the case of 1492 and thereafter, we're often looking at individuals who had converted fairly recently. Many of these individuals, their families had been arrested by the Inquisition, and they had been penanced. Um, for Judaizing. And in fact, some of the individuals that came to the New World in the early decades of the, um, the well, the late 15th century and then the early 16th century in the 1500s, their, their wives, their families, their parents had been uh, arrested and in some cases relaxed. That means that they were turned over to secular authorities and they were burned at the stake. And I think that um, 
to question the Jewish uh, legitimacy of these individuals is, I think, unnecessary. Um, there certainly were individuals that did not want to maintain Jewish practice, and then there were other individuals that, that did. Um, and I think if we look at the cases, uh, if we look at each case uh, by case, we can see examples of that. Sometimes the Jewish observance seems to be much more pronounced. Uh, in other cases, it seems to be uh, rather minimal. But I think that those issues have to be examined uh, under a different um, perspective, and that's to, to understand that not all levels of observance were the same. And I've always referred back to this. If you were to, uh, you know, God forbid, if there was a great persecution in uh, the United States and people were forced to maintain uh, Jewish practices secretly, what would they do to maintain their Jewish practices? And I, I think that if you look at the type of practices that they would keep alive, they would be very similar to the ones that Amasim and B'nai Anasim kept uh, for many generations. Shabbat candle lighting, some types of kashrut observance, some elements of Shabbat, uh, perhaps Brit Milah, sometimes not, maybe not the case. Other, other elements which are often derived from Jewish folklore, uh, from Minchagim, from customs, and so forth. So I think this is a very vast discussion. And I think that um, when a person makes definitive statements about there were no Jewish conquistadors, it, you know, it, it sort of raises the issue of what do you mean by that? And I think that uh, from the perspective of the Inquisition, these individuals were Judaizers uh, and they had Jewish backgrounds. They made that very clear. Um, and of course, for the individuals that are trying to escape the, the world of the Inquisition, they were going to do everything possible to dissimulate and to obfuscate their uh, identity. But I think if we look at the cases, we'll find that uh, there is uh, a Jewish presence there. Um, and I think that many cases, these individuals, uh, you know, especially in later uh, history, the, uh, what we would call the colonization period, with someone like Luis Carvajal or others, um, you know, these individuals are really martyrs. And I think other people have spoken about this. It's not something that I've made up. You've got uh, scholars like Seymour Liebman, who authored uh, The Jews in New Spain, back in the 1970s, The Inquisitor and the Jews in the New World, uh, many other titles. I think Martin Cohen wrote The Martyr about the, the life of Luis Carvajal. Um, I remember a local uh, historian um, wrote an article on the uh, Yardstreit of Luis Carvajal. Uh, so there are many individuals that have written about this. It's not something that I've come up with. Um, I think it just has to be something that uh, is continually discussed because a lot of people simply don't know about it. And so um, the second issue of, of the association with uh, the conquistadors, I think that is, um, it's not to dismiss, you know, the, the tragic history, but I think, as I noted in a previous video, um, the job of the historian is not to uh, necessarily render a moral verdict. Um, you know, the individuals that Cortez uh, came with, um, I think according to most counts by most historians, uh, were, were never numbered more than a thousand people. I mean, another, a thousand Spaniards, you know, from Castile or a few from Aragon, a few from other places. They were never very large numbers. The reason that they were able to conquer the Aztecs is because they had 50 to 100,000 or even more uh, native allies. And um, if you look at the breakdown of those allies, they were from many different tribes uh, in uh, what we would call today Mexico. And so those individuals fought alongside the, the Spaniards and really formed the overwhelming majority of those uh, individuals that fought. Um, and so I think that we have to look at that from a historical perspective. And while we can comment on the tragedies and the effects of the, uh, the conquest, from a historical standpoint, that shouldn't prevent us from looking at history and saying, oh, look, there were individuals from this background that were party to the, uh, to the conquest, and this, these are the roles that they filled. Um, and it's part of the, the, uh, the, the portrait of the Jewish diaspora. Um, and if it makes us uncomfortable, that's something that we have to look at as a separate topic. So in any case, um, uh, please look you know, to future videos on the topic of uh, Teshuvot, uh, responsa, that will look at the concept and the question of the legitimacy of Anusim and B'nai Anusim and how the rabbis treated them, because I think that will be uh, very important to lay the, uh, the framework or the context for my claim that you do have Jewish conquistadors. Um, and uh, in any case, it's fascinating history. Um, and if you like this uh, video, if you like the videos that I've been making, um, I haven't forgotten about the, the liturgi liturgical aspects. I recorded um, uh, one of the Torah portions, one of the Aliyot, um, verse Aliyah, actually, for this week's parasha, Va'era. Um, and I do intend to go back to um, recording more videos on the, on the uh, Sephardic liturgical tradition. 
But if you enjoy the videos, um, you know, leave a like and register for the channel. And also be sure to visit CryptoJewishEducation.com. Uh, we just revised the site, and we're planning to add a tremendous more, uh, tremendous, tremendous amount of contact uh, content uh, in uh, future videos.